Hello everyone and welcome back to my colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 0.25. In this episode I'm going to have to get that module that we we uh, left behind around the Minma station and get it into dock and for that I need the use of this this little space tug beta and I am going to disengage it from the asteroid because uh, well we'll bring the asteroid in after we get some way to attach it to the station that was the plan that we would attach this to the station and make the C class and then an E class into Minmus moons uh, so uh, yeah uh, we'll have to have a dedicated docking port for this somehow with a claw obviously and uh, probably a 2.5 meter docking port and then dock this to the to the station but uh, we'll do that afterwards uh, our little module is sort of sitting there pretty close to the station and I really need to get it in so let's uh, move right along with that hopefully I won't visit everything around Minmus before getting to the station this time but I'm starting off fresh rather than tired so um, is there any problem with keeping I guess we should disarm it for now just for safety's sake maybe you'll reset it somehow in a very important manner that I don't understand you never know uh, so now we need to get into the station area so uh, and then after that I will have to bring back the third stage to to Kerbin and then we'll see what we can do after that it depends on how much time I have okay so we've got inclination problems we've got all sorts of stuff but this thing has plenty of Delta V to make the transfer the key is that we don't want that module to drift too far away from the station before we get there and that's not the kind of timing I want. That's more the timing I want. Yeah. So, yeah, we can get the periapsis real low, and then we can... Uh, how close can we get? We'll, we'll have to do another burn to really line it up. But what I can do is correct the inclination. That's why we're doing it at the ascending node. I'm trying to avoid radial burns because those are... I mean, even though this thing has a lot of Delta V, I don't want to be too inefficient about it. Okay, well, there we go. Uh, we'll sort of get a close pass over Minmus and hit uh, with a minor separation. We'll uh, figure out the separation as we make the burn because right now, if I try and tweak it so that's like less than one kilometer, I'll probably end up missing it during the burn anyway. So uh, the version 1.0 hype is really going full steam right now it looks like and now the question is whether I'm going to continue with the series or just uh, or upgrade it to 1.0 which would be tough or start fresh in 1.0 and I'll take comments on that but I think it depends on how the resource system in 1.0 is and whether uh, they're going to make the colonization mods MKS, OKS compatible with it. Uh, if everything, I mean, I assume it's going to be compatible with it because, uh, just because, but um, I mean, it should be easier to do everything with it, right? But uh, we will see. And of course, the thing is, since the stock game is going to have more parts by necessity and more features, it's going to take more RAM which means that I don't know if I can fit all of these mods in alongside of that while it's still under the 4 gigabyte limit I mean basically with every new version of KSP it gets less and less moddable simply because of the RAM limit I don't think I'm gonna get much better than this here Well, I can fix the rest of the relative inclination. Okay, mm we'll keep it there. Alright, I think probably when I cross this orbit here I can do something more. And this will have to be radial. Okay, so we should be on approach here. And we'll grapple that thing. I think we are safely high over Minmus. Okay. Okay. Looks pretty good. 
let us approach. I've tinkered with the Maximus X in order to extend it. Remember, it had it was way overpowered, and I figured we could probably make it much larger. And in fact, I've got a workable model that can send a hundred tons to either the Moon Minmus or Duna, or Eve for that matter. So, yeah, that's something that's coming up. Remember, the previous capacity was 70 tons, but I figured it out to extend the stages to 100 tons. The only problem is whether it's stable or not. We'll have to see about that. And, of course, whether I can bring them all, all the parts back down. Three reusable stages, remember. We still haven't uh, brought the third stage of the previous iteration back. The new one, the third stage, is going to be somewhat larger. Oh, uh, trajectories, right. Uh, some people made comments about uh, what might have been going on with trajectories. The most interesting one was uh, the possibility that... Uh, um, right click. Why, why not just left click? Anyway, um, that I should have the angle of attack for the entry profile be 180 degrees rather than zero, or possibly... Uh, 90 degrees because my controller was on one side. So those are two possibilities that I think might be worthwhile checking out. But we'll do testing to f figure that out. If it's the atmosphere, then uh, in theory trajectories would be a lot more accurate on the moon, right? When making a moon landing. Uh, so we could check that, and then, then we can either confirm or eliminate the possibility that it's, it's the atmosphere that it's having trouble with. And so once we eliminate that, there are, there are very few options. Basically, I mean, because there, there are only a few things you actually need to calculate when you're figuring this out. Drag on the craft being one of them, which is why angle attack is important. So, how should we snag this thing? It's got docking ports at both ends. Which way did I want it? Probably I'd want the fat end on the inside, right? So I should grab it at this end? I think so. Do I have to target it from the center of mass if I already know where I'm going to grab it at? I haven't used the claw that much, obviously. In fact, you can watch every single time I've used the claw. Because uh, it's all in my videos, so... I think it's rotating a bit. I think it's yawing this way very slightly. We were lined up with it originally, now we're not, so... Yeah, I think it's been rotating. Well, grappling something that's rotating is a challenge. Am I really interested in that particular challenge right now? That I don't know. Okay, well that's as lined up as I'm ever going to get it. We'll slow down a bit. Dang it, I feel like it's still rotating alright. Uh, no, no. Oh, okay, finally. Jeez Louise. Okay, not not a great grapple by any stretch of the imagination. Let's see, um... Pre-pivot? Um... No, let's not use that. Ah, uh, that's not gonna do good. No, stop that. How do I line this up? You know what? I think I can bring it in. Let's target the station. Okay, let's see how bad this is. Could probably use RCS, but... Oop, 
controlling from the wrong place. <laughs> I can dock fine. What was up with this? It was because the thing was rotating, I swear. I mean, it's tough to see it rotate unless you're actually trying to dock with it, so. You're just gonna have to take my word for it. Yeah, that burn worked just fine. And that's about as fast as we need it to go. Okay. Let me identify where I need to dock. So that's our that module. Where are we? That's debris, that's debris. There that's probably us. We're actually coming in on the wrong side. Okay. Yeah, okay. Apologies for this. Clearly I'm not as awake as I had hoped. Or practiced with the claw, perhaps, is the more important thing. I think after this, maybe after we bring down the third stage and see if it can re-enter properly and everything, maybe we should uh, launch uh, the docking clamp for that asteroid, the A-class asteroid that we've got there, and the dock it up with the station. That'll be a pretty light launch. Okay, I better slow down a bit, just for good measure. Now yeah, we bumped, I think. Let me take RCS off. Aha, uh -huh. okay, uh, we are docked up. Okay, so that module is in. I'll keep the tug on. F I, th I think I'll keep the tug on for now. It's pretty light, it's not unbalancing anything. So, station currently looks like this. A little bit awkward with the tug, I know, but it's not a priority right now. Yep, all good. Uh, we could uh, fill up the tug with uh, mop belt now if, if it felt necessary. Probably it needs it. But let's get the activities underway, right? Uh, what we found out was that this thing... Can it communicate? Can we activate stuff now? Uh, is this... Well, Greenhouse says running. I don't know what else to look at. Activate Purify, running. Activate Air Circulator, running. I think that's everything, right? So everything is running now, isn't it? Curbitat. Compost full. We didn't have any compost space on this? No, oh, well, we are actually full on compost. Okay, um, well, we can activate Habitat. Okay, Habitat running. All right. Biomass depleted, but uh, this should be producing biomass, right? Uh, hello. Well, uh, we should see some... Yeah, we, we see some replenishment of biomass there. So, biomass is being produced. Okay, well, looks like we've got what we need here. I should activate command here. Punch cards are full, as expected. Okay, and probably punch cards might be depleted, but uh, we'll have to add more crew to this. I think we need a lot more crew, but uh, we'll get to that. That's not the first thing. All right, so anyway, our station, not looking too bad. Yep, definite possibilities here. All right, so next thing is bringing this bit back, and uh, not the carbonite detector, no. It's actually, I keep uh, not zooming out enough. It's this one. Okie dokie, here's the stage, and ideally I'd want to collect, uh, correct, not collect, correct inclination uh, prior to doing anything else, because um, this is a weird, weird way to go if you want to. No, that's not what I want to set as target at all. 
I get weird lag whenever I set something on the ground as target, and that's anything. Even this flag here. Right now I'm down to one frame per second when I target this flag. So somebody suggested planting a flag at the base. Uh, uh, we, we knew that uh, uh, selecting a module on the moon caused a problem, but even selecting a flag causes uh, weird lag. And that's in general, and even now that I've, uh, I've selected uh, something else on there, let me uh, select this and see if it solves it or whether I've got a persistent problem here. So even if it's Minmus, it seems to be a thing. Now I've got uh, full frame rates, now I'm back up. But if I select anything on the surface of any body, whether it's a flag or a base module or anything like that, uh, the frame rates go down. And uh, don't ask me why. <laughs> that is beyond my pay grade. Let's see which way around we're going. Well, not exactly the exit I want, but I'll take it. At least it's reasonably flat. We'll have to correct the rest of the inclination with respect to Kerbin, because we want to land as close to, to the KSC as possible. Tough from out here, of course. I wonder if uh, Trajectories is any good with arrow braking. Well, I guess we're going to find out. I mean, error, yeah, just uh, normal error braking on a pass without landing. Yep, uh, I think that is something I'm going to check out. Off to the ascending node to correct that. Wouldn't want to correct it anywhere close to Kerbin, of course. Nah, I won't correct, uh, I won't bring it in at the same time I correct the inclination. Oh, in that case, I should... I should correct the inclination on the descending node and then bring the orbit in at apolapses, so it'll be better that way. Getting to be a long trip for this third stage. Okay, there we go. Alright. 224 is not great, but could be worse. Now, I did see trajectories trying to do something over here. We'll probably get a better look at that once we uh, once we do the burn. So all of our fuel is yeah it's already transferred down. Not as much fuel as I'd like for this. If trajectories is wrong about the arrow breaking that's gonna be really irritating. Again you can't hit the KSC if you've got uh, anything but zero really. Well Point one. I think that'll do. I don't think I can do a small enough burst to correct that. So anyway, uh, we our periapsis is too low right now. So I'm going to uh, maneuver and boost it up. Otherwise, air breaking calculate. Well, nothing can really calculate it properly if if we don't have a periapsis. Okay, my own estimate would be around 30 kilometers, right? Something around there is pretty typical. But let, let me go to air braking calculator first, get that number. Okay, air braking calculator gives me 33,414 as my desired apoapsis. Uh, periapsis, sorry. At apoapsis, I will attempt to fix this on the fly. How's our alarms doing? We've spent a long time trying to maneuver this. Uh, that asteroid that we're trying to wrangle is coming in in 19 days. Now you can see the white path is what trajectories is telling me my re-entry will be. Now for air braking calculator it just uses the drag coefficient of 0.2 so it's sort of regardless of whatever end I'm pointing at. It ha doesn't uh, have any reference area, it doesn't know what my craft looks like. So uh, for trajectory, should I go with changing the... I think we should only have one variable at a time. Let's, uh, th th this time we're just checking out the air braking. I'm not going to change this this time. Let's see how it works without me messing with that. Just as a curiosity. Now I told uh, air braking calculator I wanted uh, 
a little bit at uh, 100 kilometers. Well, at apoapsis at 100 kilometers. Okay, here my periapsis is 36. That's the orbit that that trajectory says I will have. That's not bad. But then it, uh, as I turn around, of course, the periapsis jumps around, so that orbit jumps around as well. Let's see. It takes a little bit of time to update, but that's fine. Okay, then it says, well, that's correct. I should be coming down sharply then. If, uh, if everybody can calculate is right, then I need 33. I'll take 34, I think. Uh, well, trajectory seems to show me with a pretty high end there. And I don't like that. Because I want to be tight so that my... It's easier to do the math if your orbit is very circular, obviously. So uh, I don't want too high an end. Otherwise, in order to make my orbit circular, I'm going to have to do some burner or another. But then again, it's varying so much here that I, I probably don't want to adjust it right now. Okay, let's get closer in before I do any further adjustments. Okay, that's pretty much where air braking calculator... It said 33,414 was uh, what I want in order to get into orbit and have an apoapsis of 100 kilometers. Now, trajectory says that I'm going to have an apoapsis higher than that, I can tell because of the other assets I have in orbit around Kerbin. So, uh, we have a discrepancy here, and in theory, air braking calculator is the less accurate one because it has no idea about my craft or uh, FAR, right? Uh, Fermi Aerospace is also here. So, uh, we'll see. We'll see what's going to happen. Curious what FAR has to say about this. Um, drag coefficient is 0.1 on this. Let's keep that as a reference. So uh, it's a uh, drag coefficient is 0.1. Air braking calculator uh, bases it on 0.2, by the way. So that's interesting. We've got less drag going on. And reference area 133 meters squared. That probably sh won't. I mean, if we're gonna compare across craft, I I think the drag coefficient is more of what we're interested in. Okay, looking pretty serious. Oh, there is overheating on the engines. So I'm not gonna touch anything. We will have our verdict soon. Um, I think trajectory has just changed on us. Trajectories was a lot lower than this. And now it's reading this higher orbit. So trajectories was wrong again, actually. Well, I mean, not as bad off as uh, air braking calculator was. Uh, so how about on a second pass, we see, let's see, where is the KSC? I think we got to be hanging out here for a while as the KSC gets into daylight. I don't think we're even close to that yet. Yeah, it's just in the dark. It's over here. I guess we could land in the dark. But uh, anyway, let's let's go for a second air braking pass. And this time I'll have uh, trajectories read from, uh, let's say, angle of attack, uh, an angle of attack uh, 180. Now the controller is on the side of this. Hello, solar panels. Um, yeah, where are you? Controller. Where is it on the top? Hold on. No, it's on the side here. It's on the side here. So maybe I should... Well, but SmartASS seems to understand where where everything is oriented. So that's why I'm a little bit confused, because obviously I don't have to adjust a, a 90 degree angle because the controller is on this side. Because smart, smart ASS understands that and everything else, seem, uh, the nav ball understands the orientation just fine. So I assume it's based on whatever the nav ball has to say. And 
I think 180 makes sense in that case. So, yeah, I mean, angle of attack, of course, is measured from the prograde vector, right? And it probably says so. Yeah, relative to the velocity vector. So 180 makes sense. Okay, let's see if this works out better. So I've got my solar panels out, and I'm going to go out to apoapsis. And I'm going to boost up from there. I'm going to have the the top of the orbit uh, exactly where the station is. How about that? That'll give us a good reference point. So I think that's tangent. Okay, so it's saying that we'll have an orbit like that with uh, tangency at the station. Actually, the station is very high, isn't it? It's 300 kilometers. I want it much lower than that. Uh, let's have a tangent to these uh, 120 kilometer orbits. I think that's as close as I can get it. So you see it like that. So we'll see how it does. Now we've uh, changed a new variable. We are going with angle of attack 180. Okay. Maybe I won't time warp. That might introduce inaccuracies. Not that it's being particularly consistent right now, mind you. You can see it's sort of changing. Come on, you think. Stick to your guns. In fact, it's already higher, isn't it? But uh, I'll leave that be. Let's see if uh, at least this is right. But yeah, I, I brought it down to the level of those orbits. Does not seem to be there right now. Seems to be higher. Uh-oh. It just fluctuated again. Well, now it's telling me I'm going to end up at the orbit of the station. Which I think you'll remember. I deliberately wanted to be lower than. Maybe maybe if I put high. Angle at 50% of atmosphere height. Well. Okay. Well, that's a new variable. Actually, uh, let's just do another air braking pass. Because I don't want to waste my delta V. I mean, and we're testing stuff. So, okay. We'll do another air braking pass, trying to get down to the orbit of these uh, at around 120 kilometers, which is a very standard orbit for me. And uh, once we're at 120 kilometers circular, I, I have numbers for this stage. We've brought it down before. Now, when I target the flag here, I don't get any lag. Very interesting. If I target objects on the surface of Kerbin, I don't seem to get any lag. Okay, let us go to Apoapsis and see about this and uh, see if this adjustment helps. How low is low? 25%. We don't get to 25%. We'll definitely not get to 25% of atmosphere height on this pass. Okay, here we go. Well, it gave me an extra adjustment there, but uh, all right. Uh, witness reasonably close to those orbits. That's what we're going for. Now 180, 180. Let's see if this works better. Okay, we're starting to get heat up. Let's check our map. Uh-oh. It's now got us in a lower orbit than intended. Remember we were above those other other things. Now it's saying we're going to end up lower. As far as our vehicle goes, it's about as uncomplicated as you can get. Pretty much a blunt object. Far, far knows its drag pretty pretty darn well. 
And of course, uh, you, you can say, okay, well, you have to come down sharp uh, a little bit more sharply than I normally do. But then what's the use of uh, having it being able to calculate error breaking passes? It's not. It's, uh, it's got us in the atmosphere now. So it was wildly inaccurate. In fact, uh, critically inaccurate. Because now we are not actually escaping the atmosphere at all. I have touched nothing except for going to the map view. Now, if uh, sharp re-entries work out, let's try that theory, huh? Okay, so uh, we are clearly going to be coming down pretty soon. Let us bring our our uh, landing marker close to, well, I mean, our uh, land ex expected landing position close to this landing marker. Uh, I don't know if we're going to gain enough height to do that. I think we might end up there anyway. I don't know if I need to retro burn at all or not at this rate. I mean, the the expected landing position is slowly creeping up on me. Again, I'm not making any changes. If this was really our expected path through the atmosphere, it shouldn't change. It shouldn't change, right? If this was actually making a correct landing prediction, I'm not changing my thrust at all. Uh, let's tweak these right now. Uh, let's say negative 180. How about that? Let's say 90. That That's an interesting one because of the position of the probe core, right? And I'll wait for it to make a... Okay, well this... Look, okay, so 90... No. I don't like that at all. Okay, now that, all right, so 90. Well, I will do something about that. Let's see if this works out. So the probe core doesn't understand the nav ball, apparently. Uh, not the probe core, the trajectories doesn't understand the nav ball. Because what did it say? It said uh, angle attack, angle relatively to the velocity vector. That's our velocity vector. Our, our angle is not not 90 degrees with respect to the velocity vector, but uh, it if uh, where it gets its number from, I don't know. It's not getting it from the nav ball. Let's turn retrograde again. Now it's going out for no apparent reason. This is <laughs> not very helpful. Come on, come back down. It's like the atmosphere is totally not what it expects it to be. Here, I'll give some lead to it. I don't mind splashing in the water. Here we go, but it keeps extending now. No thrust involved now. Again, I have to emphasize, if it changes when I'm not applying thrust, uh, its prediction isn't accurate. Let's check the other scenarios. Let's say 180. Okay, that says all the way out there, which I don't believe. Uh, that's not going to happen. Let's say zero. Let's see what it does. Okay, so 90 is right for this. I guess it is because the probe core is mounted on the side like that. Not sure if uh, negative 90 would make a difference. Seems to be about the same as 90. Okay, and this seems to indicate that I should pull myself in a bit. What is the apoapsis? Oh, it's pretty high actually.
I could probably have gotten into orbit pretty easily. Now that we're on this. Let's wait for it to catch up. Well, let's try and get it on target, I suppose. I'm not going to have much fuel reserve, but... Okay, there we have it. So, it's basically because this can be approximated as a very flat plane. And that's why this curse it's not moving anymore now. Even though, uh, I mean, well, we'll see. Let's get through the, let's see what happens when we go through the thicker part of the atmosphere. We're, we're pretty high up right now. So I have my theory. The gap between it and the KSC is increasing. Well, I had the marker right over it, but uh, we're even on a short stint like this, we are now way overshooting. Yep. Uh, I mean, what can I say? I hope I have provided some valuable data for the person who created the trajectories mod. I don't know. I mean, I, I can't explain it. Uh, I don't know how the mod is constructed or what math it uses. And I could have sworn it was the, the approximation to uh, due to the curvature, but that was a very short distance. It shouldn't have had any problem with that, but it did. It did. And I've got, I mean, your angle attack, we, we said as as close to the KSC as possible. I mean, none of the other things, 0, 180, would have gotten us the right answer either. They were practically on the other side of the planet. I'm not angry at the mod, I'm so frustrated on behalf of the modder, because uh, I know this is not going to be... I mean, maybe I'm doing something wrong. I mean, gotta take that into account, and I'm worried about that. Yeah, maybe I just don't understand this trajectories mod. What can I say? But I know one thing, and that's that I could probably brought this down much closer to KSC than this uh, without trajectories. Okay, parachutes. Gear down, just for good measure. Those landing gear are very expensive after all. So, assuming this is successful, what we've got is a fully reusable launcher capable of delivering 70 tons of goods to Moon, Minmus, or Duna. And we will have demonstrated that quite nicely. Uh, we couldn't bring it to the KSC exactly, obviously. The first stage has to be brought down away from the KSC, there's no option for that. Okay, here we go. Let's see if this is all nice and neat. Okay, looks good. Floats well. Recover. So, there we go. And, in fact, uh, recovery of a vessel returned from order around Mimis got us 20 more science. So that was a pleasant surprise. <laughs> I'm getting L's in here somehow. Now, I have not solved the procedural liquid tank problem. Uh, of course, I figure if I keep recovering them, it sort of nulls out the effect in the end anyway. Even if it's cheaper in the VAB, if I recover it, I end up paying the cash anyway somehow. So we'll just keep trying recovering stuff. I haven't seen anything in the config file that indicates where that's coming in. And it could be baked into the... the uh, there's something going wrong, because I, I remember using procedural parts just fine. Actually, uh, before I go, let's take a look at how it works in the VAB. How about that? Alright, so I'll start off with a controller, just for good measure. And here, the controller is 450. Okay, so this reads 548. Now, let's see what happens when we dump the fuel. Ah. 
So it's one of those things where, uh, again, the the empty mass, uh, the empty cost, is is negative. We still get charged. Uh, I guess we get a discount on the fuel if we buy the tank. I guess maybe there's some sort of deal like that. I don't know. Um, how about uh, let's see? Uh, this is uh, how much fuel is this? One point one tons. A little bit less than uh, it's 1.08 tons. Let's see. Let's let's make it the same size. This is a uh, 425. Yeah, there's no way. Uh, if it should be the same price as this. And so, yeah, or re uh, close to the same price. And so it, it's um, incorrectly cheaper. It's incorrectly cheaper by by the amount of the tank. This is not the only part we've had this problem with. Uh, not that one. So it might be it might be a multi mod it might be something that adjusts multiple mods causing the problem. Oh here we go. Radial supply tank. Right. Radial supply tank. Uh right now it's got stuff in. Let's let's go to a more extensive okay, so this one Don't tell me the this thing is fixed and oh no here we go the machinery it was the machinery that I was trying to load in this and it gets a negative value here so it's something that is affecting multiple mods I don't know what it is so yeah I'll, I'll continue to examine that situation but as long as we keep trying to recover our stuff and yeah I think it we'll, we'll call it even for now that's the best I can do, unless I can really dig into these mods. Alright, so, um, sorry for the lack of launches, at least. We brought stuff back, but um, obviously it took a while to get that module onto the station and to get the third stage back. Alright, so thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.